Hey everybody, welcome to the Growing with Fishes podcast. I'm Steve, and this week we have a special guest. We have uh, Norman, our uh, chef Norman with us. Uh, he's a chef that works with us very all the time at the uh, Ouroboros Farms. He teaches, or not, he does, well, he teaches fish uh, as well, as far as how to uh, prepare fish, but um, he also does a farm-to-table dinner with us at Ouroboros. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Steve, and uh, hello to all the listeners. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited to be on. And I uh, so I'm here to tell you, really, from a chef's perspective, what chefs are looking for, you know. And I can really speak mostly for myself. And I know I come from. I have a different heart in all of it than a lot of industry people do. You know, industry, and I mean restaurant industry. When I say industry, is really always dollar driven. Um, I've been working for food or with food for about 20 years now. Actually, I was just doing the math prior to this call, and uh, yeah, since I was 14 years old, and yeah, it's my my inspiration and my desire and my uh, passion for it has really just blown up uh, just in the recent years. Uh, moving to California and then finding my way to all the farmers markets and just all the fresh produce out there and then I happen to stumble across Arboros Farms, this aquaponic uh, farm and it's just amazing produce. Um, now what is so amazing about it to me is the consistency in product. Consistency is key with chefs everywhere, you know, especially when you're getting to your high-end chefs. They're looking for you know, things that are down to particular sizes of inches and centimeters, you know, like that's just so huge as, as well as quality. Quality, of course, aquaponically grown, there's not really much else out there that can be it. It's just, a, in my experience, again, just amazing stuff. And I'm also coming from a perspective of doing good for the land, for the earth. And aquaponics is just another surefire way that just really does mother nature good does everything good uh so i, I know i don't need to preach much about that because all of you listening i'm sure probably <laughs> already know a hell of a lot more about it than i do but so why don't you uh, so, why don't you tell them a little bit about your background and what what uh, okay. your uh, chef experiences you okay. um, quite accomplished oh well thank you um so i started when i was 14 years old washing dishes i worked my way up i worked in uh, numerous restaurants, hotels, uh, living communities. Uh, the Ritz Carlton was my most recent employment. I now do personal chef, private banquets, and catering. Um, yeah, I try to. My my intention is to keep it simple. I'm trying to recreate my own culinary wheel here. Um, and as of for the past, I don't know, two three years, I've been working with uh, Ken over at Arboros, and uh, now you as well, Steve. To putting on uh, 100 mile dinners where I'm sourcing everything, every ingredient uh, within 100 miles of Half Moon Bay. It's like if I can't find it, I'm not going to use it, and that's been uh, that's been a heck of a push for me, <laughs> creatively speaking. You know, so but it's been a really fine experience, and just again, just getting to the roots of the food and the flavor. Somebody asked me recently, uh, what's my inspiration? You know, and they were expecting me to name. Uh, top chef or something and I told this person food food is my inspiration the ingredient you know, every ingredient has has a story every ingredient started somewhere grew somewhere was tended to was harvested by somebody you know, so it's that's really my inspiration um, yeah so that's that's a little experience mixed in with that uh, with that story there so something I did want to get to as far as uh, selling or marketing to uh, chefs and restaurants and something that I love personally is going down to the farm. Now I know a ton of chefs have no extra time whatsoever and so it's a really challenging thing to do uh, to get them to come down to the farm but you know always extending the invitation is huge you know whether you're showing them pictures if you go into the kitchen um, I heard another uh, person on here talk about going right into the back of the kitchen and looking at the angriest guy you know and going to talk to him but you know if you could get somebody down at your farm that's just key you know locality is key uh, yeah so 
So why don't you tell us a little bit more about what you know you look for is from a chef's point of view. There's a lot of different uh, aquaponic producers uh, that listen to the show, and what do you you know as far as from your point of view, what are you looking for, and what would you know? How would they better market to someone like you compared to, say, a soil gardener or other things like that? Okay. Um, uh, availability is key. Uh, that's that's kind of number one. Um, is availability. Uh, if I know somebody has a certain product consistently, I'm going to go to them. If I go, I, I work with a lot of local farms, and uh, Arbors is the only aquaponic farm that I work with. I know what they have, I know what I can get, I know that I, the sizes I can get, it's, um, that's, that's a huge foot forward for a chef, especially in my position to where I'm working with all local farms. Uh, whereas other farms, like, oh, uh, they, they got hit with a frost or a drought or something, so which affects their entire crop, which affects everything, uh, you know. So um, availability is key. As far as varieties go, you can, uh, what I've come across is the safe, the safe bets are your mustard greens, your uh, butter lettuce, your red and green crisp, your sized, insized. Um, those, those are your safe bets. Everybody loves those and they're pretty, I don't want to use, hmm, they're, they're common. They're commonly seen and people have enough familiarity with them, being the consumer that is I'm talking about has enough familiarity with it that they're comfortable ordering uh, something that they see on the menu that has that ingredient in it. Uh, so uh, what else? Growing sizes. I think I mentioned that already. Being able to actually, um, the other day I just put out this beautiful baby head lettuce salad. It was just so gorgeous. And I've never seen anybody else do that. Um, where in all the restaurants I had ever worked in, you know, just to actually have something that is so normally produced, and I've seen cases of it come in time after time of just this gargantuan <laughs> heads that really don't look all that good, um, to actually get it to the size that I want it. So, yeah, uniformity too, sizes, custom growing, that's, those are all huge key factors. You know? Uh, and then also something else I thought I was thinking about is uh, uh, building value, building value on your products. Um, so again, aquaponics is a huge, huge step forward um, environmentally. And if if you're talking to a chef that has any inkling towards, you know, a, a positive impact on the environment, I mean, that's a huge role that you could play there. A uh, huge card, I should say. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, building value. Also, again, I'll repeat it. Take them down to the farm. Get them down to your farm. Let them see your operation. I mean, that's going to give the chef the connection because nowadays, I'm finding the new the new thing is the connection to the food. People are so disconnected, but everybody's looking for that connection, and actually being able to step foot on the farm, talk to the person producing it, and say, hey, listen, you like this? Awesome. If you, oh, you want something different? You want this? You want a ruby streak? Awesome. I can get you that. I'll grow it. It'll be six weeks. You know, it's like, those are the things that really drive a lot of chefs now. Just getting to know, getting in there, getting the connection. It's like, okay, I don't think I can stress that one enough you know just that really that connection to the food i mean hell i even helped out oral Boris for a little while and i started like i love their products so much i started delivering to some of the michelin star restaurants in the san francisco area and i just got the beautiful box of produce and just kept the root system still on it you know and it's just like that's another uh advantage you could say fresh harvested i i talked to somebody else that was even saying all well, this technology coming forward you could even start having an app that follows your order or follows your lettuce you know you could uh, have a like each raft with a little scanner on you know talk about like basically from the time of seed to the table so like that's something new 
Like, just giving away our secrets. Now, it's, it's called gaps. It's called gaps, and it allows you to sell to schools and all. You have to have everything labeled from the start to finish so they can tell what plant and what row it came from in case there's contamination. That's been, they've been working on that for about oh. five years. Oh, wow. Cool. He's giving, he's giving away the secrets. It's the Department <laughs> of Agriculture. You can look it up. GAPS is the initial. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. So you saw something like that already exists, but now turn it to the consumer because everybody's so everybody has their handheld devices now. It's like shit. If there's an app for that, people will get it. People will use it. People will check it out. You know. So using that technological curve to benefit you. You know. So. So. So, that's, uh, yeah. so you've also worked with some of the fish from the farm. Uh, do you want to speak on that? Oh, delicious, delicious fish. Oh, my gosh. I haven't seen trout that big ever. They're huge. <laughs> like, I've never played with trout that big. It's, uh, it's crazy. Um, uh, the catfish, so far I've just worked with uh, catfish and trout. Um, I've done a catfish ceviche, just amazing. Flavors, flavors delicious. Um, uh, let me see. I, had, I was doing a dinner once, and this guy, a uh, gentleman approached me, and he considered himself to be a catfish connoisseur. <laughs> and uh, he told me that it was the best catfish he's ever tasted. Now, I mean, sure, I'll take a compliment of my cooking, but hey, you know, I can't create good food without a good quality product. So, I mean, but I know that Ken, um, I'm not sure if this is still true, but I asked him a while ago that he, you know, if he's organic fish feed, and uh, I know he still uses organic fish feed, but um, if, at the time, it was the only available organic fish feed on the market. Um, but yeah, the fish is beautiful, big, <laughs> delicious, fresh. I mean, doesn't get any fresher than that, you know? Hell, I was in there in the tank with a net pulling them out. <laughs> so. Do you uh, so, notice any difference in taste? Uh, I mean, this is just an ignorant question, but uh, between the no, bigger and smaller fish? Uh, no, I smaller? haven't. I haven't uh, done a side-by-side -side comparison. What I have noticed, though, is uh, the taste of the fat on the trout uh, tastes different than any other fat that I've tasted on trout before. Well, distinct, you know, so not bad, not good. It just it is what it is, you know. Interesting. Um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, we're doing a... a, a Farm to table CBD dinner at the at the our boroughs. Do you want to talk a little bit about that and uh, tell people about that? Because we're super excited. This will actually be the first announcement we make on it, so I'm super stoked. Well, I'm uh, I'm excited to play around and uh, get in their creativity and or creatively and serve up. I'll probably do a four course meal. Uh, I have yet to come up with the menu, but we'll see what's what's fresh, what the season offers, what the area offers, and um, yeah. Uh, Working with you, Steve and uh, Ken, I'll definitely have access to some wonderful CBD and know, be able to identify the exact dosages and be able to customize that. I'm looking to be able to customize per person on tolerance level, and I know Steve that you have uh, all that figured out. So I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Should be a lot of fun. Something new, new for me. I haven't experimented with this. Uh, with the public yet, so this will be a first for me doing CBD in public. Yep. So That's we're gonna, cool. yeah, we'll be doing a farm to table dinner, uh, all CBD again because of uh, the different uh, legalities. We can't do THC, but we can do a really cool CBD dinner, which will be all all local, just like his normal dinners, and uh, it'll, it'll be a really cool time. And that'll be on June twenty third, uh, but we're looking at right now, so. Uh, we'll have the information up for that over at ouroborosfarms.com uh, next uh, couple of days. Yeah, yeah. It uh, should be a good, relaxing time. <laughs> yep. So, well, um, does anyone else have any other questions? Um, his time is a little bit limited today. Um, well, we'll have him back again at some other date. But uh, does anyone have any other questions at the moment? I've got Sorry. one question because of the farm to the table because we have that program sure. too. You know, just like the certified South Carolina grown. I'm on the East Coast. Um, sure. If I was going to go to a chef, what what kind? And now you said, yeah, of course, I've always looked, but I live I live a basically an hour or so from any of the good chefs. Okay, so okay. I'm not that close. And like you said, I know I've worked in restaurants, 
both out the front and in the kitchen. And I know how busy the chef is if it's that kind of restaurant. And sure. I was curious as if I was trying to go uh, hour, contact these okay. chefs to try to get them out here. What what would I maybe grow to already have growing that would be real enticing to a chef? That's what I'm getting at. The kind of thing you walk in and that you as a chef and most chefs would say, I wish I could get that fresh. Okay. Um, I guess it kind of depends on your market. Are you marketing? Um, uh, what are you marketing a busy? family style dinner lunch dinner restaurant or are you marketing or is your target market like a, a one to three star michelin restaurant well so that's i basically first. just trying to get foot in the door restaurants where i can make i used to have a couple restaurants i delivered to every week okay and, well, uh, and i'm just trying to get back in the door with something i'm thinking trying to think of something different to grow to i created my own niche in the first place to get with whole foods by growing habaneros and poblano i'm a okay. big pepper i mean I'm a pepper. That's what I like. but i grow uh, lettuce and tomatoes and you know whatever you know, to eat. Yeah. Um, big, I'm growing it to eat to cook. well uh, i think an all-around good staple is um Microgreens, micro yeah. everybody loves microgreens. All, okay. However creative you get with that. I've seen like micro carrots, everything. Um, yeah, super miniature micro carrots. It's crazy. Um, okay. That's what yeah, my local, uh, I hate this, the local hydro guy told me the same thing, get into yeah, micro. Oh. Yeah, yeah, microgreens are huge. You get a high turnover, it's like uh, low grow time, and then best bang right. for your the highest profit margin. I mean, some staples are again just butter lettuces, but then you could get into like the colors, your your crisp, your red and greens on uh, butters, crisp, sized, incised, uh, oats. Um, let me see. I love. I mean, the crust is great. Uh, mustard greens are just gorgeous. Uh, flashy trout backs. Um, I mean, heck, those those are all. Mm. Bok choy, bok choy. You like that stuff? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, it's to delicious. I mean, square foot. Okay, 25. well, that's you answered my question. I thank you okay. very much because you yeah, just confirmed some welcome. things I thought and believed, and then you gave me some good ideas. That's yeah, why yeah. I, yeah. Uh, just give uh, you know again, just go with what people have an idea about that gives them a basis of comfort, so they're not right. <laughs> you know it's hard for people to go out of their comfort zone. You know, so it's like. Oh, they say, oh, it's a red butter lettuce. I'm not used to that, but I've played with butter lettuce a ton. So, okay, this is cool, different, but also something I'm sort of used to. So you just start branching out slow and sure like that. I mean, hell, I know there are probably thousands of varieties that I have no idea about that you could do some research in and, uh, you know, find something, you know, find something that strikes your fancy. But then offer those basic products and then start offering custom drawing, you know. So, and that's when you get personal with the chef. Hey, chef, what are you looking for? Hey, you know, are, like right. here, here are some new things. Here, what can I let start me help for you. you. Now. Yeah. yeah, let me help you create a new dish or something to implement on your menu. You know, so I mean, in a lot of seasons, in the country, you, have, you have a big yeah. seasonal play in the now, not as much in yeah. California, but on the East Coast, you got much more of a seasonal thing too. So you can yeah, target what he needs during what season. You know. You know, especially if you have sure. a green. Well, and that's and I mean, hey, play that, play that to your upper advantage. I'm originally from the East Coast, and um, yeah, totally play that to your advantage because you're using in, indoor indoor system to where you have control uh, over elements that soil farmers do not. You know, so unless they're growing in a greenhouse as well. But um, but yeah, hey, you know, just talk to the <laughs> chefs, talk to the people who are cooking their food. If you're looking for, you know. I mean, hell, I'd say microgreens are blowing up right now, and uh, yeah, they've been yeah. safe bet. Yeah, so yeah, I think that's great, especially if I'm starting my first aquaponics greenhouse this year. Mm -hmm. uh, microgreens sounds like a perfect way, you know, that and some lettuce, you know, or, sure, or some like I said, bok choy or something like that. Yeah, I know they, we got a you know a decent size Oriental, you know. Sure. So, you know, uh, Todd soy is Todd soy is another really good one. That, I'll look it up. I'm sorry, you're going. You're saying something. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. You know, uh, something that just popped up is uh, over at Arboris, they grew celery and garlic. Garlic was just fantastic and amazing, and it actually it never went to scape, so which was interesting. But love um, to talk to Steve about the garlic. It, yeah, that was really good. But also the celery 
it was it was interesting. It was delicious, but it was salty, and that was probably something to do with the water. But it was just hmm. different. And I mean, hey, you know, as a chef, I mean, hell, uh, you you get creative with these nuances and these different things. You know, it's like, oh, it's just another opportunity. So, not to say that it's bad, not to say that it's good, not to say that everybody wants it or not. But yeah. if you're if again, if you're targeting creative chefs who are looking to do something out of the norm, so to speak, you know, or do something new and different. This is where you have the opportunity to offer a product that nobody else has or nobody else is offering, you know? So, awesome. so there you go. Well, hey, uh, Thank you so thanks. Thanks so much for having me on. Yeah, why don't you tell people uh, how to find you, your website? I, I put your links to stuff in the description, but okay. why don't you tell people uh, sure, sure. as well? Uh, uh, well, you could uh, find me at Farm Fresh Chef dot kitchen uh it's my website you can see uh on the the food page there's a few pictures um actually and more to come tomorrow i'll be getting a ton from uh, the last farm dinner we did but uh a lot of pictures of the fun that i've had with some of the food uh, you'll definitely see some of our boys farm stuff on there one of the first pictures is the catfish ceviche and um yeah you can contact me there i've got a uh, it's linked up to my Email are you right. sharing recipes? <laughs> uh, I I will if you ask me. So but no, they're not up there. So. <laughs> and, I love uh, you. <laughs> hey, you know awesome. it's, it's all about sharing. We're all in this together. Cool. All right. Well, Thanks hey. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, you're so welcome. Thanks for having me. All right. Take care. Take Thank care. you. Bye bye. Right, bye bye. Oh, how's everybody doing? How, what's new with you, Josh? Uh, just a minute. I'm I'm rolling up. I'll... Okay. What's new with you, uh, Roger? Well, I, I, I'm getting taken back my farm. I got to work my butt off today. It's uh, got until about a half hour before the show came in and said, "Oh my God, it's after it's after eight thirty already." You know, and but it's nice. We're getting to those days where, you know, I'm not I, I I'm up late at night, so I'm not like your farmer that gets up at five in the morning kind of guy. Uh, so I like the summer this kind of year when I get all those day where it's daylight till eight o'clock or nine o'clock and I can still get my 10 hours in, you know, so that's kind of, so I'm, I'm very happy right now. I, the, uh, we've got all kinds of wildlife out here and they're running around and I've, I've just been up here catching up with the farm and, um, I recovered one of my old, uh, hygronomics.com, which is, a uh, a site that I've always taught hydroponics and green living off the grid, solar and wind. And it's what kind of what the site was built about. And, you know, I'm going to have now that I'm, you know, I've been with you guys for a year. I'm going to be adding an aquaponics area to it, you know, because that's really what I'm going to be doing new. I've got a lot of stuff. Uh, although I'm constantly experimenting. So that's about it. I'm getting ready to start a bunch of seeds and play around with stuff. See what, you know, I've got, I got boxes of seeds and I, I decided I'm just going to go. I got all, I got probably 200 pots with nothing in them. Uh, I've got all kinds of grow bags and poly bags and, and leech trays. And, you know, I've got just about everything you, you could think of that you put water in for, for growing. And then I've got tons of regular pots. So I'm just going to fill things with pro mix and throw a bag of seeds in there and see if it pops up, you know, and then start putting, I'm just going to have fun this year. I'm going to overgrow myself to where I go crazy, you know, but in the end I might make a few bucks and help out some neighbors and feed some people that are hungry. So that's, that's about it for me. I'll give food away. If, if I know somebody, you know, needs it, needs it, I'll be glad to give it away. So, cause I will overgrow myself. I'll have stuff out there. And in fact, I was thinking I might do all this and with the idea that I could probably sell, started plants just like they do at the store you know have people come over here and buy a plant that's already nice and healthy and ready to go and plant in your garden or whatever so that's about it for me that's about it for me i want to thank uh norman again for coming on i apologize for his briefness and then his background noise but uh, he's really really awesome chef he worked for a long time at the ritz carlton and um he's a really 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 good chef so uh, thanks again for coming on and, and we had a, a bunch of requests to have a chef on and talk about you know from a buyer's perspective uh, uh, you know, the great. Produce and so it was kind of cool thanks again. See, it was nice because most people like him wouldn't have done it because they were at the restaurant you know the cafe or whatever you know they yeah. were inside they had to go outside and in the back 
you know, whatever. Most people wouldn't even do, give that kind of time. Then they'd say, I just, I'm too busy, you know. So for him to take a break, his like his break is what he did. He yep. took his break. It's pretty much what he did, down. to be honest with you. That's why he had half an hour, I'll be honest with you. That's why that was yeah. like his dinner break, just to be straight with you guys. So yeah, so if you can build that up in your restaurant business, you know, he don't, you know, if you're in there, the only time you'd have off is if you get a break, you know. So that was great of him to give his break time or dinner time to us tonight. That you know, and I hope he comes back on a night he's off where he can sit around and really talk, let us really pick pick about food and stuff. Cause and thank you very much, Norman, for that great answer about my question about what to grow to take to a chef, you know, and say, try this, you know, to try to get him out to your farm. And I, I agree with him too. It's hard to get him out there, but that's the whole thing. If you get him in that greenhouse and they see them vines growing vertically, you know, and you got all these beautiful fruit all over the place. And they, you know, I know how I go nuts. So I can imagine if I was a chef going, hmm, you know, yeah, I'll take some of this. You know, I could cook this tonight, you know, or tomorrow, you know. So that's that was a big time thing we all need to know is try to in the low. I, I like he brought up your locality too, Steve. He brought up locality was that. And that's hard for me. That's where I said, well, I'm in over an hour for most chefs of that kind, that kind of caliber. And so that's been an issue for me. So, but, and it's interesting though, it's hard to get land anywhere close to them. That's the other side of it too. You know, depending on where you live, I guess uh, you might, it might be different in California. But I yield the floor to the next guy. That's all I got to say on the matter. Thank you, Norman. Thanks Steve for getting him on tonight. Yeah. You had a bunch of, again, been a bunch of requests for a chef. So tried to squeeze them on. Uh, what about you, Mr. Green Jeans? What's new with you? <laughs> Let me get this thing working. Yeah, uh, not much. Uh, yeah, just doing the usual thing. Run it, oh, yeah, the pressing is really fun. The rosin is amazing. I've got that, that little wand, you know, that little uh, concentrate collector thing. It's not, you know, it's not high tech. It doesn't have any like a little electric nail or anything, you know, I'm, I'm still, I don't even have a torch to heat it up. <laughs> so I heat it on the stove, but it, it works good. It has a little quartz tip, you know, and, uh, but that's, that's about it. Uh, the, and then, uh, yeah, the, 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 uh, the interesting uh, saga of the, of the people getting angry at me for being the, not being the original Mr. Green Jeans. <laughs> Ooh, I guess. Not. Well, you don't spell it the same either, though, do you, brother? You don't spell it the same. I wonder if how many uh, of the imposters even really <laughs> the imposters. I shouldn't say, you know, um, uh, you even spell. know what the origin, what the origin of the name is, you know, because uh, it's a, it it does have an origin in the arts, you know, and then. Uh, I I guess uh, I probably mentioned before, you know, it's a music reference, and, um, and specifically that way of spelling it. Actually, you can find it spelled that way uh, in 1969. Uh, it was the oh, first sorry, and, okay, of a song by Frank Zappa called "Son of Mr. Green Jean." Right, so. It's kind of funny because on my website, the, 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 and it's kind of a joke, it says family seed makers since 1976, right? So, uh, and <laughs> uh, so people are like, what do you mean family? You didn't even have, uh, your daughter wasn't born until 1988. And I'm like, yeah, but it's a, it's a joke because of my friend who gave me the name, gave me the name around 1976, and he was a musician. And he was referring to the song by Frank Zappa. That was, he was making a musical reference to that song uh, when he gave me the nickname. So the, you know, so I was named that around 19. So my, you know, so I guess I, I, I unfortunately the friend that gave me the name is, is dead. So I can't actually call him up right now. Hey, Bobby, can you prove to these guys on the podcast <laughs> that I'm the original Mr. Green Jean? Uh, so we can't call them up, but there, I, there, there are other friends that, uh, that have known me since then. And I'm sure could corroborate the story. Well, pardon yeah. my ignorance because I thought they were thinking you were ripping off Captain Kangaroo's sidekick, you know, 
Mr. Yeah, Green. and his Green. name was Jeans with a J. It is in right. the regular like spelling. Here, blue jeans, green jeans. Right. Yeah. But right. Zappa, Zappa actually spelled it with a G, uh, which, oh, okay. which is cool. incredibly That's clever, funny. in 1969. And the full title of the song is Son of Mr. Green Jeans. Uh, which is sort of the joke when I say family seed maker since 1936. Uh, what's really funny is now I, I actually have a son. Now there is a son of Mr. Green Jeans. He's about two. He's two and a half now. And so, <laughs> Well, when you hang out with a group of musicians and hang out and do that and, and, and for, uh, work on instruments and all that thing like that and, and all the other things involved, you end up calling those people family anyway. You know, exactly. we consider our band and all the girlfriends and the family of them. And if something happens to their mom, it's like our mom and, yes. you know, it's family. So that that kind of that's what I was getting out yes. of what you say in family the, thing. The friend that named me that is was a band mem member. He was the singer in my band and he was he's, in, you know, he's a studio, a jingle singer, jingle New York City guy, you know, the friend for years. So, yeah, it's funny. Huh? The nickname. So anyway. Yeah, so I, I mean, I don't know whether I should be uh, flattered by people, you know, wanting to take the name. I, I think that when, when I left, when I didn't, I won't say left, but the like the last time I posted very much on IC Mag, you know, six years ago or whatever, that was um, probably mm, there was nobody. I don't think these these this guy that's complaining that's saying uh, and i don't even know if it's one guy or a couple people in no it's just one guy and oh it's all God. because uh, the whole thing spawned over i realized i was looking for your youtube channel and i found his and then i went wait this isn't you and i asked him yeah. hey why are you using his I don't name have one. and then yeah. here's here's like the website and i said this is why are you like doing that and i said well, whatever, like, I'm going to go tell the real one, and that's it. Like, that's all. And he accused me of reporting him to YouTube. He accused me of reporting all these other YouTube channels and starting all this stupid bullshit drama, and none of it's fucking true. I never reported him to YouTube, even after all this bullshit. I never, like, all I did was tell you he existed. That's all I ever did. And, and, and but what I happens never... is, what happens is, is what, what happened, what actually happened is, and it happened to me too, is that YouTube's algorithm in the last two months oh, yeah, yeah, has yeah. has changed, and if you have marijuana or mm. cannabis or pot or weed or 420 in any of your tags, it yeah. automatically flags it as cannabis and its age yeah. restricts it. And yeah. so, and that's what the problem is. It has nothing to do with anyone's f bullshit fucking back and forth stupid drama. The guy got is totally off base. He went and attacked ah, me. He on thinks it's because he of went, that. Uh, he went and attacked me on Instagram and made a total fool of himself when it, it didn't fucking happen at all. I like he's, he's just a fucking Muppet, but whatever. Like I'm not a, a <laughs> stupid people say stupid things. You know, I, I have double the YouTube subscribers and a way bigger following and I have more views in the last 24 hours on my, my iTunes than, than he has in an average week. So I could really give a shit less right. about what he thinks. But uh, at the same time, you know it's stupid the the stupid infighting and blaming each other when none of us had to do it is fucking stupid okay yeah we need to work together and we have alternatives so you have the guy from the slings and this is what i wanted to talk about i didn't want to stand here and talk about and start a fucking stupid bitch match and fight fight and and argue and make yeah. stupid shit what i want to talk about is, yeah. is i want to talk about positive fucking solutions of the situation so one uh, you have the guy from the Slingshot channel has started the YouTube Union, which a lot of cannabis growers have joined over there on the YouTube, uh, on Facebook. There's a Facebook group you can join on there. Uh, and then they're actually working together to help actually form a conglomerate to actually take some legal action and try and actually block some of the recent actions by YouTube and, and give us some actual protections rather than the stupid infighting bullshit that is doesn't help anyone and and no one did anything to anybody you know they, so we got to work together if we're going to actually protect ourselves if we if we keep pulling this kind of really? stupid bullshit for no fucking reason and again he went and had, he called for people to report my channel all, i don't I, I basically demonetized my channel at this point because they ought to demonetize everything anyway so it doesn't do anything my, all my stuff was already age restricted anyway so it was just kind of funny it didn't 
I didn't have any. I think there was three videos that got age restricted. That was about it because all of them had been age restricted two two months ago. I, I had basically my whole channel demonetized about two months ago. So did Marty, and it basically and Marty had a big long post about it. He spoke about it on the show, and and after that, it's Wait, just like it's, well, whatever. If you're restricted. It, they they don't pay you. Is that what you're saying? Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So so my YouTube has been basically, with the exception of a handful of the um um the videos that i have for like um or Boros farms for some of the veggie stuff that's about the only stuff they haven't demonetized but everything else has been demonetized but that's wow. just because they because because i tag it as cannabis or marijuana because i deliberately tagged it as that and it automatically flagged it so i didn't realize that i thought it was just like restricting some access no it looks it at it taking no, away how the, the algorithm yeah. works and a lot of people don't understand this is it looks at your you, your your video title and then it looks at your tags and it looks at words in your description and if there's keywords in there that are restricted it'll automatically flag your thing and then it'll make you appeal it that's how this whole system works and what I've ended up doing is I backed up, first off, I backed up all my content to, a, to a, a cloud drive. So I have every single video on my thing, plus a bunch that I haven't shared yet on my thing on, on backed up. And then I got the whole thing backed up on SoundCloud, the whole thing backed up on WeedTube, and, and I'm looking at backing it up on another uh, video place as well. Uh, and now it's also, I finally got it fixed. It's all on iTunes now. So if you're looking to listen to the podcast on iTunes, um, there's most of the episodes, a couple of them aired out. I think there's maybe six or eight episodes that didn't upload, but I think there's at least 75 that worked. Um, so I'm, we're going to work out the kinks on those last couple. I do apologize. Um, but you will be able to listen to all those on iTunes and uh, all your different podcast apps now. The RSS feed works. And, um, you know, as long as it feeds from from iTunes, you're good. So, um, yeah, definitely check that out if you're you're on any of those. Um, we've had over a thousand uh, listeners in the last uh, last day, so I'm super psyched on that. But yeah, I just that that uh, it just there's no reason for us to fight and cause stupid drama. We all need to work together and fight this whole issue with YouTube. YouTube is shutting down a lot of different people's channels or trying to giving people bullshit ass strikes. Um, one other thing I wanted to speak on. I'm a big fan of the organic uh, farming community. A lot of people that do totally edible, completely non ethogen ethanogenic can, uh, mushrooms like oyster mushrooms lion's manes their youtube channels are being taken down right now because they're being accused of supporting drug production and that's bullshit because these guys are absolutely nothing to do with any of that i've had three separate friends of mine from colorado that are very heavy into the uh shiitakes and i have a friend of mine that owns a mine that does mushroom production and he lost his youtube channel uh, this you know this really sucks for these guys and you know they don't have any way of recourse against that so we're not they're the only community that's being hit by this we need to grab them work with them work with the other cannabis people being screwed with work with the other people being demonetized like the guy from the slingshot channel some of the gun guys some of these other people that are all being basically penalized for no fucking reason and work together not this stupid accusing people of reporting no one reported anybody of anything it's the algorithm that's reporting you automatically i've had that happen to my own channel that's the reason why i backed up all my channel in the last two months you know this is stupid so yeah, i definitely i definitely you know i the whole thing about you know i was all about sharing the name i didn't even go back with any of the emails that the guy sent me i was like well it's okay if you can you can use the name too you know <laughs> you know i mean i don't know i i or you know uh, well, let's be friends and i'll make a link to your place oh yeah, yeah the other are you looking for the other guy the other guy that goes by mr green jeans well here he is it's, you know why not <laughs> I mean, right i don't uh, that's that's uh, I go along with what you're saying. That let's work together. You know why? And so anyway, uh, for the record, this Mr. Green Jeans did not report you, other Mr. Green Jeans, whoever you are. You know, and I would I wouldn't do that. You know, that's not that's not my style. <laughs> Again, no one, no one reported you. It was the algorithm. The same way that my channel got reported, and no one went out of their way to to put a stick up your ass. So, just for the record. And they're in lots of reasons. suffering just the same way, dude. It's not just oh, shit. Whoa. There in lies the reasons why I build my own websites and monetize myself there. Drive traffic to the website and do your 
affiliate accounts and charge for what you want to charge for or sell some products that you kind of sell exclusively and don't, I don't have Facebook business accounts or YouTube. I, I, I never really wanted them up my ass like that. You know, I've always been, you know, I want to be kind of private. I mean, I want to have some privacy, you know, I've uh, actually uh, been on I Love Growing Marijuana a couple times recently. Answered a couple questions for me. Awesome. When I when I just straight up Googled, I was like, answer Google and stupid stuff. Like I got a bunch of Cinex and I was like, how does Cinex do outdoors? I love growing marijuana.com. Here it is. And I was like, whoa, damn. I went through that like four or five strains and it kept popping up. Every, it was just straight Google. So it was cool, dude. Thank you. Thank you. I'll pass that along to everybody and over there in Europe and all the guys here in the, in the, in, well, not in the Carolinas, but in the, in the, in the United States where, cause the company's got employees all the way across this country and in Europe. And uh, I'm not sure if we got anybody, we, we do a lot of business with Australia and New Zealand too. Um, but they got all their hands in all kinds of stuff. Speaking of mushrooms, I was told, I, I don't know. I, I, it's been so long. I don't have any idea, but I was told they were getting into the mushroom business about a year or two ago, a year or so ago. And I never really got, you know, we, we, the company keeps growing. So I'm not really sure what's going on with that. But, you know, uh, when you, Steve mentioned that a minute ago and now you mentioned it, but I, I love it. They're, they've got, we got over 500 articles in the blog. You know, that's pretty cool. I mean, not everything you can't agree with. It's basically people say, well, why do you teach this? And that you got this article. Well, you got the article because some people believe that's the way you do it. So we basically just give you the information of all these different, you know, methods and ways to do it and beliefs more than we try to say it's only one way to do it and you got to do it our way or it's wrong. So, so we got 500 over 500 articles which yeah well thank thanks i'll i will pass it along i mean and they they do listen to the podcast some because i'll like when we have a good show um i i tend to try i, I shoot them a link or something and we do post the the podcast and try to keep up with it in the uh um i started because of the podcast i started a the i i love growing podcast network so no um, dude it's actually gonna it's actually uh you know just to further it's gonna save me save me a bunch of money dude there was i made a, a trade uh for some some flour that i wasn't really wanting to sell for a bunch of clones and and the way it worked out i ended up getting like i don't know 10 here and 12 here and of like four or five different strains that were pretty popular which just wasn't something i i wanted to in the market you know because i don't want to be coming in and trying to be like no i got Sinex too dude i got blue dream too you know and like i'd rather have something a little more exotic and not be competing strain for strain so but anyways i was like i got all these plants and they're here and you know like afghuli uh Sinex, cinnamon cookies and and i just started googling you know like how do they grow outside because i was about to root toss them you know honestly just throw them away and and I have the space. Yeah, I have a whole acre here to plant. And it was like, no, they kill it outside. All of them. You know, so it was all I love growing marijuana.com. So I'm going to plant them up and it'll make me some money. Cool. That's really cool. <laughs> That's good. What, 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 where's our uh, minutes? How many minutes are we on in the show, Steve? So I can. What do you mean? Like how, how long have we been on right now? So I have a time stamp of when to tell the people in the We've office. Been on that... For 45 minutes. 45 minutes so it's about 7 15 that or yeah. 7 15 pacific yes thank you okay all right I, then i can i know where this conversation is yeah okay. um josh why don't you tell us what you've been up to yeah i was gonna um show you guys these seeds here these oh, seeds all here. right you guys are interested you in um, this is my peaponics uh set up not aquaponics, no fishies, just the uh, just the walk by. Um, yeah, no, there's a whole bunch of seeds here. Are you guys interested in, in seeing what I got or hearing about it? Is that yeah, it? fuck yeah. Okay. Um, it might take me a minute to. Decide Hell yeah! What... I, I had to get my. Ah, uh, this shiz. Here it is. Um, they're about ready to be top soon. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm waiting to water them tomorrow, and uh, maybe top them next week, early next week. Um, and yeah, so I can sort my males and females. There's about 300 plants here. Um, 
Yeah, so this is uh, from BioVortex, or uh, it's in her nature, I think, is what he's going by now. Um, and this is the Shiz cross Banana, cross Holy Crack, cross uh, Sapphire Scout. And that Holy Crack cross Sapphire Scout, Scout is a cross. Um, so this is Shiz cross Banana, crossed with Holy Crack cross Sapphire Scout. <laughs> There's a lot of that in here, but uh, it's really interesting stuff, I think. Um, he's pretty famous for the uh, uh, Black Dog. Let's see. I will is... say those those CBD clones we got from that uh, yeah. uh, conference, dude, mine are kicking ass. They look so good. I don't know about yours, but mine are killing it. Mine are stunted because I just put them outside. Um, I got, I, they got thrips by the time they got, I got to them. And uh, so I just kind of set them on the porch, and they're just hanging out. Um, but they'll get, they'll get there. I was able to sift the males, though, because of that. So that was cool. So this one is really exciting. This is the black dog, and I think he's on uh, the F5 with the black dogs now. So it's pretty cool. It's grown in, in the Santa Cruz area he, is where he breeds all his stuff. And this is the black lime reserve across the black dog. And the black lime reserve is... Uh, I believe uh aficionado release mr mr uh mean mean gene um so that's a pretty pretty dub cross and then uh another one of his uh is the athena crossed holy crack cross sapphire cross uh black dog let's see here and i got some of um pacific northwest roots here what is this um Key Lime Frap. Uh, he's up here uh, in Washington, I think out in the Anna Quarters area, and they're just uh, recently licensed and about to blow off. They have an incredible, um, if you guys don't follow them, you should follow um, Pacific Northwest Roots or Worldwide Roots. Um, they have an incredible wash facil- facility for making hash. Um, he just went on and was posting it. Um, it's Kaya. And uh, yeah. Uh, this is cool. This is Synex Kush. This is from my homie here in my neck of the woods, uh, Eagle Trees, uh, Mount Baker Highway, Kenny. Got a couple of his, Synex Kush. Uh, Unicorn Feathers. I can't remember what the cross is on that, but that's HBK Genetics. Uh, this is um, Mount Baker Highway, Eagle Trees as well, the ACDC Crossed Royal Kush. And he is that Royal Seven from Mendelbrot um, from back in the day. There's a lot of stuff here. Uh, this is also from him. Oh, no. This is um, Equilibrium Genetics. Cherry OG crossed Gorilla Glue. He, he did a number of Gorilla Glue crosses that I got. Um, I got a Forbidden Lemon Gorilla Glue cross. Um, Super Sour Orange. I can't remember what that is. I think it's the... I, there's so much stuff here. I have to, I have to have look look back at my notes to go through it all. You know, it's it's kind of embarrassing when I start looking at it. <sighs> Super sour orange. That's the purple anarchy from uh, Rebel Grown. Uh, super cool dude. What is that? That's this is all cherry uh, OG glue. He puts a lot of beans in his packs. Hama Hama, which is up Pacific Northwest roots as well. Um, and the Hama Hama is an oyster that is up here. So it's named after oyster, Hama Hama Oyster Company. And then also uh, Mount Baker, Eagle Trees, uh, Lavender Chunk Norris. And I just smoked some of that last uh, couple days ago, and it's really, really fucking delicious. I'm super stoked. Sherbert Glue um, by Equilibrium Genetics. Uh, Sunset Sherbert Cross Curl Glue, obviously. Let's see, uh, orange, orange Harley Sue speaks for itself. This one I'm excited about. Uh, that is HBK. This is also HBK. Um, green candy Jack, uh, green crack cross candy Kush cross Jack hair. So, um, should be stinky. Double OG from, um, uh, rubble grown. Let's see, DM, what is DM? I got a Mandarin 
crossed banana, crossed sapphire scout, crossed holy crack. I love that one, holy crack. Yeah. <laughs> And then the back Black Dog 5, I got the straight Black Dog 5, which I'm stoked about because I, I think I told you guys I live right by the beach. What is the benefits to that? It's, so, he, so he was telling me that it's a super uh, mold resistant and he's growing it. He's, he's breeding that along with the Equilibrium Genetics in Santa Cruz area. Um, so it's just by the ocean, wet. And, uh, and I looked at the buds and I, he like from a – you know, in the inside his bag, standing up, you know, he was crouched over and I, I saw it. And I was like, what's that? You know, when he opened the jar of buds and I was like, he's like, that's the black dog, dude. And I was like, that's outdoor. And he's like, yeah, full term outdoor. And I was like, okay, give me those seats. <laughs> you know, um, it was just, you know, from a distance, you could tell it was fire. Oh, there's probably a few more I'm missing in here. I'm trying to see. What is this? Oh, that's the Mandarin banana. That's what that is. DM. What the hell is DM? Oh, Diamond Masters. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what the cross is, but that's HBK uh, as well. And he's a super cool dude. Um, I'm really excited about this one. He's done really well with it. He's down in the Central Valley area, and he actually takes summers off and does his work uh, fall through spring is a pretty dope way to go you know it gets really hot hot there in the summer 115 and uh he's what i what i would call like a, a nano ultra nano farmer you know he's working small little spaces probably similar to you mr green jeans it's uh, it's amazing to me to see the the to be able to select like that i mean yeah i'd love to hear you talk about it more just to make selections with you know small <laughs> You always head. need to cram as many plants as you can into any space. I mean, no matter. Look at my. You know, I think any better. <laughs> I mean, it's like you know. So There's his space. I'm new to this, but uh, I'm new to crossing stuff. But when I cross it, it's like I get to do 100, 200 seeds, and it's really easy. You know, I got all this area. Do you want to show everybody <laughs> an update on your greenhouse too? Yeah. They're Last still, week. They're still, they're coming. But they're coming too. Um, Love it. I just love it seeing that. <clears throat> yeah, it's the the weather just turned for us here. It finally just stopped raining. And it, today was 75 degrees. And my goldfish made it in my pond, I found out, which is cool. Yeah, it was 76 here today. We, we, we It feels like we just turned the corner, too. So yeah. I was really excited about that's what I was talking about starting a million seeds this in the next couple of weeks, you know. So this I got the stuff I was yeah. talking about, uh, Roger. Um, I was going to toss all this right here. Just kind of seems kind of crazy, but I'm just going to plant it out in these Hugo culture beds. Uh, it'll fill it up and yeah, let it, let it go. That's what I do when I got too much stuff here and there. Well, I mean, I can't grow cannabis outside, but if it comes to produce and stuff, yeah, I get too much. I just find places to plant it. I'll go make a new row bed in the ground. I'll I'll go buy another bale of pro mix and, you know, I'll just go to it, you know, and start growing everywhere. I mean, I'm ready to start hanging plants and milk jugs just to have more plants. Yeah, there. no, that's how I do it. I, I, I planted <laughs> these covers this week. Can you guys hear me? I don't have my headset. Yes, we can Barely, hear you just fine. We can hear you. Yeah. I planted a bunch of uh, thyme, cre creeping thyme. This is this like low, low growing, you know, one to two inch perennial woody uh, stuff, right? That like those is that are all different? Is that different than Eng is that different than English thyme? It is. It it grows uh, one to two inches where English thyme will grow six, uh, 12 inches, eight inches, you know. And that, that, so that's kind of the, the whole thing. It's like really low, it's woody, so it's fungal dominant, um, and it's perennial. And uh, and then I planted a cup of the couple of these guys. Uh, this is um, azalea, not azalea, but the I don't know. Um, Look at my tag over here. But it, they're they're actually in the brassica family, which does not support myocarizae fungi. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Right, but uh, I was uh, Suzanne recommended it because it helps the uh, 
the bucks, the beneficials. Oh, uh, okay. I it's actually a banker. Up Efren and he's like, yeah, if you just do a few, it's all good. Here we go. A uh, Sweet Asylum. Am I saying that right? Alyssum. Jeez. Alyssum. Sweet Alyssum. So I have, a, you know, I planted, uh, you know, whatever. That many, 12 in the whole greenhouse. So it'll help out. But I still have all these extra plants, you know. I'm gonna. These are all Synex here. I don't know if you guys can see, but I'm I'm all planted out, and I just gotta, you know, add trellis, and uh, I'll be I'll be off on the races. Really, this pie hose jamming. It is, you know. I was loving it. That's my belly button, between my belly button and my chest, you know. And I'm six foot one. Those are going to be monsters. Yeah, dude. I'm going to have to hack them back, too, to, to slow them down with these guys. So it should just be top, top, just, you know, go, go, go. Yeah, this is, uh, I'll walk over here. This is something I just kind of did naturally. Um, I got this flexible uh, ducting with holes in it. And then just a little four inch um, fan, you know, just sucking air and moving it upwards, blowing it up. And this is something I, I used to do back in indoor growing uh, a long time ago. And I just, I set it, set it up. I haven't done all the beds yet. Um, but after talking with some guys who were doing like big, big greenhouses, you know, they, the, I was commenting on how there was really low airflow in the facility, you know, like in indoors, we just like, uh, we just blow fans all it's chaos, you know? And, uh, they started talking about convection and how they want all the air moving upwards. And so they really work with root heating, root zone heating. And, uh, and so I was, I was like, Oh, well, I kind of do that in this weird way, you know? And, uh, so I, I don't know. We'll see. I think it's pretty good, pretty good deal just to have a little air to move everything up and then, that gets hit hits by the half fans, you know, and then anything up there is getting dumped around. And so I kind of got my chaos up here, but through the canopy, um, you know, otherwise in here, there we go. It gets a little quieter for a second. You know, it's so dense. And I'll hack this back for sure. You know, I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, they need a good, they need a good haircut. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so busy. That's what goats are for. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, dude, I wish. I, uh, I show you guys this over here, my other little hoop house. I let my ducks. I have two chickens in this one acre facility and three ducks. And the ducks are totally cool. And the chickens are assholes? They're assholes, yeah. Yeah. They totally destroyed this, dude. I mean, it's it's, you know six one way half a dozen the other like destroyed slash put a bunch of awesome nutrients in there but i'm gonna totally have to fix it these were beautiful beds you know uh i don't know 18 inches tall actually <laughs> and they're just flattened they're spread out all over the place oh they dug them out oh yeah, yeah look at all you know you can see like <laughs> stocks and stems look at this it's just gnarly so Wow, that's a bummer, man. That's yeah, a lot chickens, of work. Dude. I know, yeah. Look at this Jeez. Boom. Oh, man. Holy but, crap. Uh, yeah, they totally were. They, I mean, this was high, dude. This, you guys, this was way up here, you know. <laughs> but it's, uh, this is a farm. <laughs> yeah, like I said, once you open a greenhouse, there is no more days off. You you don't um, get vacations. You don't. You never get to do nothing. It's is, uh, it's like, so you got to love growing, everybody out there. If you're going to open a greenhouse or start a farm, you better love growing because you're going to be doing it every day until yeah. you stop or die. So. Yeah, sun, the sun just grows indoors. You know, it's a different thing, but outside they just grow. But we got we got rice, uh, rice, mice, and rats. So that's why I was showing you guys the kitty. She's prego, which is a good thing. <laughs> and. uh yeah, a lot of people don't want cats around their garden, you know, because the, sh the shit is toxic. But uh, I don't know. Oh. We, we need some help on the, on the mice front. Toxoplasmosis never hurt anybody. I'm just kidding. 
Yeah, you heard him say, everybody, he's just kidding. Okay. Right. right. All complaints go to Marty <laughs> at Hot Rod. Hey, dot hey, so hey, I hey, something. Hey. I'd be curious if any of you guys have messed with like something like this. So I got these lights here from Home Depot, and my plan is, uh, since I don't have light depth in any of my my facility, I was gonna like plant everything out. You know, plant this hoop house out tomorrow or the next day, and then plant these beds out. And I got a bunch of these lights, and I was gonna hang them and keep everything in. in I don't know. I was kind of even thinking of keeping it in 24 hour uh, lights, you know, keep the lights on all night. And then when we get to uh, July 1st, turning the lights off. So we go from 24 to, I don't know, whatever, whatever it is, then 16, 15 and a half. You might hours. shock them. If you're doing outdoor, it'd be way better off making it like 16 or 18. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I fuck with them a lot. Less. My point is to 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 like just like we do indoors to trigger them hard so that they flip quick and then finish quick, right? They will yeah. they'll they'll soft they'll soft trigger and they'll get all weird and they'll slow growth and then you won't get as good a yield. I, I've 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 experimented with that exact thing in a greenhouse in Colorado. Okay, thank. You. That's and I agree too. Cause I, I hate to jump on Steve's, but for different reasons, I just believe that you need to have a rest period. And I like to grow at 16 to 18. I mean, I never grow longer than 18, but I'm more prevalent. I try to grow at 16. And I find that if you do that and emulate, you have those shorter days, you can also cut down on your stretching. You know, of course, outdoors, I'm not sure since I can't really grow outdoors like that for, you know, that plant. But, uh, um, uh, so I'm not real sure about that, but I always like the shorter photo periods because of better root production and um, and the fact that it it, it, it the plant transitions a lot easier. It transitions, you know, nicer and more consistently than all of a sudden, you know. That's, that's There's that's hormone that's production that only takes place at nighttime, and you really right. need to give them that nighttime thing. Now, you can, kind of, you can get away without it, and it will work, but you're going to end up with one uh, more issues. Uh, now, let me ask you a question before I before I even say this: Are you running those lights 24 hours a day? Those red ones right now? No, no, it's okay. it's not practice that. I'm, so you're you're preaching to the choir on that aspect. Good deal. It was it yeah, was that's just, not a good idea. Uh, I, I, I was kind of thinking of this trick, you know, this way to like get my outdoor thing jamming quicker. You know, if I like kind of just did this thing, you know. That way, because that way it would be, and I got the idea from uh, when I was in indoor a couple seasons ago, and I had them on 24 for whatever reason for a short period of time, and then I was going to outdoor, so I was trying to match the cycle, right? And I dropped down to 18, I was kind of making my, my drop down, and uh, one of my strains triggered triggered at 18 hours, and I was like, oh, damn, that sucks, and then later on in the season, I thought about it. And I was like, you know what? Actually, that I could use that to my advantage. You know, what if I, you know, and so I kind of concocted this idea. But I never really reached out to anybody. to see might, it, you, know? you might get lucky, but nine times out of ten, what will happen is it'll stunt growth. And then maybe in August, it'll start growing again, but it'll be all weird. And it'll increase your chance of herming. And, and don't you get some foxtail, more foxtail? You get more foxtail, you get more finger leaves, like single finger leaves, and you won't get as bushiness or the density out of your buds. Um, but you might prove me wrong too. Uh, but that that's the experience that I had. It, that that's way. the truth. You never hey, know. As soon as you tell somebody they can't do it, then they do it. And it comes what do you got to say, way? Mr. Green Jeans? You look like you have something to say. No, I agree exactly with what Steve is saying because the bump, the bump is not good. You know, going from going from a, a really different time zone, you know, to, uh, you know, uh, that's, you know, it's better to, to ease them into it. You know, if you're going to give them some kind of outdoor lighting, it should be close to whatever they're going to receive around midsummer, which is June 21st, right? Yeah, the and equinox is June 21st. June yeah. 21st, longest day. So, you know, I, I think you should definitely ease them into it, you know, trying to give them. The other thing is that the idea that 24-hour uh, – Day cycles uh, gives you faster growth. I'm not really convinced of that. I think I really think plants grow a lot at nighttime. I think they need a minimum of four hours. Okay, let's say if they're doing really well, mm, otherwise, yeah. it, they, it, you know, the plants doing growing really fast and everything in all other ways, then they really, I think they even need their sleep even more. So yeah, plants that are doing. Out. 
doing I mean, what I'll need I, I at totally least agree. four to six, maybe eight hours or whatever. Because really, beyond that, I don't really. I I, I think it's diminishing returns. I don't even really believe that right. you're actually uh, making any money there. Is and in so my my experience. Oh, I, sorry. I, and and the other thing. The other thing is, I, I think you should try to ease the plan into whatever day length they're going to yeah. be using. You should right. be using your outdoor lighting as a way to, and you should figure out pretty much exactly what your day length is going to be there at June 21st. Well, see, probably... that's, that's what I have done in the past. And, and I, I, you know, my whole idea was to like get that to trigger harder and faster and get that, you know, from July 1st. Whenever I did that, you know, I see, see to get another flower and to get them to flower sooner Harder, because yeah. so, uh, so to flower sooner than they naturally would. So even if I backed off to where so are you, what's the latitude? You're up in Washington. Yeah, right? I'm up in Washington, almost by Canada. I'm 40. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. So, I didn't realize. So, okay. so my, my dark, yeah. my it's like 17, 16 and a half Gotta get it uh, done. hours of light. Yeah. Uh, around that time and so um, what i was like thinking is is you know and I, maybe i keep them at 20 and just and then when i get to july 1st right we're at 15 and a half i turn the lights off and that drops them from 20 to 15 and a half and they should trigger right then hard and the light keeps diminishing and so we should go right into the fall season and i and i should be able to harvest early september and avoid the rain maybe there's a question mark, question mark. There's a theory that plants that only see decreasing days, uh, and this is about seedlings. It's a theory about seedlings, not about clones, so I'm not sure what you're doing there. But the idea that seedlings that only see days decreasing will flower sooner. Uh, so in short, uh, in, day, in climates where you have, uh, they're high in latitude, you have a very short summer, uh, the later you plant, uh, you know, you don't give the plants uh, uh, is is better. It's a theory that uh, with seedlings, it's better to plant later in farther north areas. As a matter of fact, <laughs> there was a, a book written on that a long, long time ago about growing in northeast, the northeast climates and stuff like that uh, by Peter Oakham. <laughs> anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, the idea that Planting late gives you uh, gives you uh, that exactly what you're looking for uh, that jump on that more percussive finish to your flowering. That if plants so, only only see the day decreasing from the time that they're put in the ground. So we're talking about you know clones or something else. So there's probably a way to uh, manipulate that idea. So sure. in other words, in other words, yeah, plants are only ever seeing and never seeing uh, the day increasing they're only seeing a decrease and i think it's i think it's a good idea i think what you're talking about and it could probably be right around june 21st why not have it be at that point or maybe that's too early i don't really know maybe that's a really great season for you because maybe that's the time when you want to encourage a lot of vegetative growth because in your region that's kind of important for you you want to get trees you know to encourage a tree is kind of difficult where you live right you only got a certain yeah, but window but i'm time. also I'm a, I'm a pushy sucker and i'm outside right now you know right. I saw, and i uh, saw people yeah. aren't yeah and i think i'll be okay i can i can i can rectify the situation with a lot of midnight work if i have to <laughs> yeah. but, well i um, think yeah I, mean, I think it really could work but yeah probably like 20 hours at the most of 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 supplemented let daylight. me ask you Maybe this, even this is, uh, sort of an ignorant yeah, i should know this answer but what is the term for that it takes a seed to reach maturity because i know like early on they won't just flip into flower you know they need to reach sexual maturity what is that that's a month, is it, it's a month? But, but really two i like two months but i mean i'll let uh, gene mr green jeans answer too but i flower plants really really early a lot of times i mean um let me see if I've done five generations in a year. Whoa, that's finishing the plant in two months or less, isn't it? From seed. From seed. But you're, but you're starting so them. Like, 
you're starting to before they're finished too, aren't you? I mean, you're starting to. Well, next I'm talking about taking a generation, taking <laughs> taking the oh, seeds okay. off of another plant. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've done about five generations in a year before. Wow, wow. So these guys, like the seeds I just, just showed barely you, over two months. You know, yeah. that has like, to do with your small cups too. I think or the forest flowering and the small. That I think that you're able to pull that off because you're using the small vessels. To grow in. But the question the of how how early can you sex a plant? You know, how early can you yes. flower a plant? Yeah. I Most think right away. Say two to four weeks. I think right away. I, I, I heard well, otherwise. And I'm obviously wrong. I think if I think genetics are gonna play because certain genetics just are not all that sensitive anyways, and some sativa things, you know, really got a lot of momentum. The seedlings have a lot more momentum than they do later on uh, if you take a clone of them and they settle down you know later on as a clone they settle down but as a seedling sometimes sativa genetics are have a uh, uh, momentum they're like you know <laughs> they just grow like crazy they take off so well, so like the ones i just showed you you know they're probably a month old maybe a little bit older honestly like i haven't been taking that great a care of them they didn't have a lot of light when they were indoors and oh, now, yeah. they're, now they're outside, and they have been for five days. Um, and uh, I just kind of did a quick count, and I'm, I, we're getting about nine hours of darkness right now. You know, and uh, sh should I be worried? Should I, should, I, should I get some light on there to keep them in, in vegetative mm -hmm. state? Or I kind of, I, I was under the impression that because they were seedlings, they would just kind of roll on through this. If your legs are still getting longer, you don't have to change your light period. If you're at six, if you got nine hours of darkness, I always grow at sixteen eight to start. Period. I never grow at eighteen or twenty or anything like. Well, clones can take it a lot. To, in my opinion, too, clones can take the eighteen to twenty hours a lot better because they're already a mature plant genetically than a seedling and all the hormone, you know, whatever that's got. Like, like the, you, Mr. Green just said, sativa that's going go, taking off. You know, I just put this, this is two, you know, like a week and a half, a week and a half, two weeks old. And I put it in a cup, this cup yesterday. Now, this sucker ju jumped an inch and a half overnight. Right. Oh, by the way, this is the cherry pie, Mr. Green Jeans, I told you about. So I don't know if you yeah. like the looks of that or anything, but it's a cherry pie right there. That's one of the things that was supposedly one of the ingredients in a uh, Girl Scout cookie, I think. Yeah, we were always talking about you. If, 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 I was waiting for you to remember. That's why I figured maybe if I showed it to you. Durban you know. poison. Durban um, poison. Cherry pie. And something else. Another. Cherry pie was made by Durban poison. Wasn't it Durban poison OG? Maybe. Maybe. I, I thought that was one of that those were, you know, uh, the ingredients that the, to make uh, Girl Scout cookies. You might be right on that, yeah. Anyways, I don't know. But anyway, yeah. Oh, yeah. What were we talking about? The um... <laughs> light, Sorry, light, smoking light. that rosin. Yeah, the yeah, the light. Yeah, you know, I really, I, 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 I really think that yeah, it's it's the, the, you know, you don't need you don't need a long day length, you know, a shorter a shorter day length. But um, those those look pretty good. I mean, they don't they don't yeah. look like they're they're growing slow or anything there they probably could maybe it's it's cold there right i mean it's still oh totally yeah we just cold at night time it's, it's you know they they've got down to 38 you know yeah it's day. warming up here I'm, I'm worried about spider mites already i'm starting to get we're looking at this, <laughs> <laughs> this next week is going to be hot you know the mites are going to be like wow let me come inside can we come in you have some tasty plants indoors there <laughs> that's the other thing i think uh, mr green just kind of made a point uh it, it it your plants look like they're growing incredibly good i i don't see you know it's like if it ain't broke kind of thing it's like watch the plants if they're going ape shit like that i think you're in good shape you know it's only uh, because I, mean, I have to repot so much it's just so much repotting all the time re, yeah. re and i have to do it because uh because i've got a whole bunch of different clones a whole bunch of different cuttings and I'm trying to offload, you know, some of them. <laughs> well, I mean, as much as the other family members and stuff can, you know, can carry them into their garden and everything, it's good, you know. So I, and every time I get a little room, I start a couple more waves of seeds, you know. I've always, I'm, I, I got to make room for seedlings. I always have to run a few, you know. 
got to run a couple seed runs now and then. Always curious. See yeah, I'm going. <laughs> what's next? Check this out. What do you like? You see this? What do you like the way that looks? It's beautiful. This I can't believe that I was able to get the company stuff. This is Maui Wowie. Uh -huh. And actually, Josh, you were going um, last week. You were going all you, when I showed it. Sounded like you were kind of drooling over my strawberry Kush mother plant. Yeah, I actually have a strawberry Kush seedling. Let me show you that. It's really funny because I see a lot of. Um, I saw something the other day called uh, Durban poison that looked exactly like my Oreo, and. <laughs> And of course, it makes sense because people can remember Durban poison a lot easier than they can remember Oreo. And uh, and it really, you know, what's in a name, I always say, you know what I mean? Who knows? Um, you know, I'm fortunate to know that the Durban poison that I got was, you know, really from because I have the friend and whatnot. But for example, with Cherry Bomb, uh, whether that's really from Maui Wowie or not, I mean, I'm not exactly sure. You know, that goes down to my dealer's connection in New York City. <laughs> you know, who really knows, right, at the time. So, um, yeah, we go. Know, what's in a name, right? <laughs> right. But it's always, it's always nice well, to be able to at least be able to give the reference of your trace whatever you know gave you the right to use that name you know what i mean what's the story what's the lore that goes along with that is very is the well most because none of us got any of this stuff you know normally like by going to lowe's of course not <laughs> there's some, <laughs> by some going to lowe's. maybe you, maybe you did go to lowe's but it was in the parking lot you, know, so you definitely the story is what counts and you know the reputation of the breeder is is everything it's the whole it's the whole thing you know that's all you that's what you're selling is the truth that's what i that's what i was always saying is i i could be bullshitting about cherry bomb and somebody recently on ic mag i saw in one of the threads was saying hey you know that story sounds familiar isn't that the story the old same as the old chem dog something or other story <laughs> And I was like, yeah, you know, fuck, I don't know, you know, I'm 60 years old. <laughs> I probably changed it, you know, I, <laughs> and, I, and it's true. My, my daughter, that my daughter did call me out on, on one, you know, recently and say a detail saying, oh yeah, you said this, you said that. And of course anything is possible, but that's why it's great. Now I'm glad at least, you know, uh, to get the story out into the public. And back in the day, I was paranoid to even write it down, as I've mentioned before, as well. I should have been right. You look at the, you look at the written, your written notes and you're like, Oh my God, if I get busted, <laughs> you know, these, <laughs> this is a, a, a trail to prove that I've been doing this for the last three years. Um, it's it's a great relief not to be living in that in that situation anymore. To be able to well, even you know, just honestly, keep... like even showing you guys my garden, uh, it's illegal. I'm legal, licensed, but um, I, I I I think about it a little bit. I'm like, do I really want to show that? You know, I don't I know. know who's watching. Uh, what any you know, I'll take that as far as your mind wants to take it. Right? I don't it's know who's great. watching. Oh, being... I, I agree too. Yeah, I feel the same way after a show. Like I just showed three seedlings. You know. It's like, well, I just spilled the beans, didn't I? And my uh, yeah, and the business name sits right there. You're looking at it. I mean, yeah, I'll just yeah. spell it out for you guys. But my, you can look on the internet and see what I sell and see uh, where my address is. And it's, you know, it, it's not that hard. Right. If I show another male plant, we could get shut down for porn, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, you know, we, I, I tell you what, I've, I, this is what I, I get, when I get paranoid, you know, cause I've been doing the moderator thing for over 12, 12, 13 years. And you know what I get, I get, I get, we don't get it as much anymore cause we've educated and the membership kind of tell people right away, they get all freaked out all of a sudden. Oh, wait a minute. I posted something on a canvas for them. Oh my God. I said, well, there's thousands of them. And the, the law is not looking for the small grower anymore. There, in my opinion, I mean, if you flaunt, if you flaunt it in their face in a in less than legal area, you might get popped. But they're really not looking for you because they know you're staying home, doing minding your own business. 
they're looking for the crack dealers and the meth head, you know, way more than they're looking for a guy growing six plants in his freaking closet, you know. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. You're totally, you are 100% right. And I think that's a good, good message to bring uh, because there are a lot of people, you know, I'm worried about like the, uh, you know, the county guy that's that's looking at my shipping containers or something like that because they are not tied down right, you know. Well, yeah, now see, I got that too because I got a farm like you do and I got a frick in my yard looks like, I'm like the guy you used to drive down the road and say, I can't believe their yard looks like that with all that shit in the yard. And now I've got I'm the guy with all the shit in the yard. <laughs> it happens, man. Oh jeez. <laughs> yeah, it does. So did um did you guys have anything else you wanted to bring up? I um I've been uh just busy working on license applications in a couple of different places. I'm probably not allowed to be any more specific than that. It's working on multiple license applications. If I say any more, if I get myself in trouble. Um, well, that, that's something else that um, I you, you wanted to ask what I was doing earlier is that we, we've got a guy in Canada that's starting a 10,000 plant farm. He just got the lease on a reserve in Canada, and we're trying to design that farm for him. And if everything works out, we'll be seeing you guys on the West Coast here in the next couple of months, probably. So I'm sorry, Steve, but... You sounded like you were just telling us about doing the same stuff, so I figured that's a perfect time to throw that out there. Cool. And Steve might help me too, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yep. So just working on actually working on applications in the, in Canada and the U.S. You probably not get in trouble with saying that. Um, just finalizing a bunch of paperwork. I'm sick and tired of looking at spreadsheets. I'll be honest with you. Um, <laughs> other than that, working on. Uh, uh, can't talk about it yet, but we're working on a big event that I think y'all will be super stoked on. Um, event details coming soon, hopefully in the next two weeks. Hopefully I'll be able to give you guys more details on that. I think you guys will be really, really stoked. Your mic's um, going to hell, Steve. My mic's gone to hell? Yep, going to hell in the handbook. Right. How about now? Yep, that's perfect. Yep, look, okay. I mean, we're all... <laughs> we got the thumbs up and thumbs down thing going on, real. Really. All right, so we're working on a working on a cool event behind the scenes with uh, with some really awesome people, um, and uh, hopefully we'll info on that in the next two weeks. So that'll be cool. We're working on um, what else we have going on. I have Chris Trump on next week, so that'll be really cool. If you're into Korean natural farming, he's one of the best. Uh, so that'll be really really awesome. Um, we have a couple of other cool guests lined up after him. So that'll be uh, really, really great for you guys. I got the podcast finally after it took me two days worth of tinkering to figure out what was wrong. Finally figured it out. But uh, our podcast now works on iTunes. So be sure to check it out over on iTunes if you have an Apple device or uh, over on SoundCloud or on the Weed Tube. I uploaded all of our podcasts over to the Weed Tube dot com which is now a youtube alternative for cannabis friendly and uh growers as well as mushroom production uh basically anything that youtube's kind of cracking down on right now um they're pretty friendly too so uh if you go to there and click on the podcast section you can find all of our all of our episodes um i that took me the better part of five days to do uh, uh, so i just realized so. no i just realized it's going to take me five days to upgrade all the links at ILGM, where we have your podcast all listed. Well, I doubt I had to download 87 episodes. Each one's about two hours or more, and then re-upload them one in an audio format, and then <laughs> others two in video format. So it, I worked on this day and night. This was a labor of love, uh, and this was I panicked when we started getting a bunch of um, the age restrictions on YouTube, and went, well, if they're gonna nuke my YouTube channel, I don't want to lose all my work. And I don't think you all would want to lose all the awesome content that we have. So uh, I was sat oh. back and just ground out, backing that up for the, you know, pretty much 12 to 14 hours a day until I got it all backed up. So, so that'll be cool. So if you're interested, we have it available in all formats now. If there is a format that I do not have it available, let me know. And it might take me a little while, but I will figure it out. Just let me know. <laughs> but if there's a platform or something that you need me to get it on, let me know. I, I think I figured most of this stuff out now. So 
I appreciate the, those of you patient, and I also appreciate uh, there was four or five of you actually that when you saw that, that it was finally working, actually went and reposted it to a couple of places. Very much appreciate you guys doing it. Thank you so much. Yes, thanks a lot for sharing all that. Also, finally got around to like setting up my Instagram, so I'll be posting some stuff from there soon. So I don't know. That's what I've been up to. Working on some more classes for you guys. Yeah, we'll have a teacher boot camp this summer, which would be pretty cool. So if you're an educator and you listen to the show, we'll have a, a couple, like a three or four day class, uh, all set up just for educators, which would be really fun. So aside from that, just the normal classes coming up. Um, you can catch them all on arboresfarms.com. Um, what else do you have going on? That's about it. It's a little bit of a slow week this week. I apologize, guys. We um, Originally, Chris Trump was supposed to be on this week, and then uh, he had to push it to next week, last minute. So we uh, got Norman on, and uh, his time was restricted. Marty actually had a uh, um, was not able to join us tonight. He had something come up last minute. Um, he'll hopefully be back with us next week, but I did talk to him today. He just was uh, unable to join us last minute. He had uh, some, some family stuff he had to take care of. So. Hmm um what else is going on i don't know i know um uh fish conch guy has been working on his new job and stuff and i don't know it's a little bit of a slow week today hogmaster's moving he's moving from uh the midwest to uh over here in the south he's coming down south he live one state over from me he'll be about four or five hours down the road when he gets moving that's why he's not around tonight well he's been working his butt off as many hours to get, make as much money as he can for moving. And then, you know, he's been selling stuff and he's just been working his butt off. So he's been going to bed early cause he's been getting up around five in the morning. So that's why he probably didn't make it tonight. Most likely. Yeah. You know, just to and talk then, about another panelist that we have sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And I did see us. I had a dummy sighting today. Yeah. And I had an aquaponic yeah, dummy sighting, you know, on the, Facebook on Facebook, I yeah, I ran across the post he made on yeah. the um, I got two sets of plants going. I got some CBD plants and some THC plants. They're both doing really well. I'll probably maybe throw a video up of at least the CBD ones. The THC ones are kind of crammed into a space. It's kind of hard for me to film in there because of the space size. It's it's not much bigger than like a grow tent, so it makes it kind of hard. But um, I'll get some videos up at some point of those too. I got a question for you. Since we talked about this yesterday or today. I don't know. I don't know if it was yesterday or today. Um, why don't you explain? I, I asked you a question because um, somebody very dear to me that's older, you know, I'm not going to say who on, on the live cast, but uh, are, are wanting to use um, CBD oil. And I was worried that at their, you know, with their status, with their retirement and uh, say the VA and stuff, I was worried about if they used the CBD oil, if they would, you know, flunk, if they sat somehow ended up with a cannabis test and, and could possibly lose their, their, um, retire, you know, not retirement, but their medical benefits or something. Steve, could you address that real quick for people? Cause I don't think that's well, very widely known what we discussed. Well, so it depends. Now, if it's T if there's THC in it, um, say it's if it's medical cannabis derived, it could be an issue because they don't know as limited on the THC values. But if it's from hemp derived from CBD isolate, then you'd be totally fine. You're not going to test hot. And kid, would you say that all cannabis plants, even though they're CBD, are going to have some level of THC in them? No. No, they've got actually got strange. No, there's some, some some sativas, some some African sativas have oh, no CBD well, at all. Okay, 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 but that's not wide widely spread uh, and available to everybody either, is it? No, those are mostly sativas, and then like more of your hardcore pure sativas that you're gonna find like southern southern half of African continent. Is the drug test uh, that's commonly used? Is it for THC specifically? It's for the THC metabolite, as far as I understand. And the dogs, what are the dogs triggering on? Ah, good question. Good yeah, question. Good we can so the, dogs, out, right? the, the dogs hit on a terpene. Um, there's two different terpenes they train the dogs to hit on. 
And that's what they're training the dogs to hit on. So if you have a fully dewinterized wax or shatter, for example, in theory, the dogs won't hit on it because there's no terpenes. If you can strip the terpenes out completely. And uh, uh, I did push the limits. Uh, the dogs in the airport are not sniffing for weed. Well, uh, mo- no, alleg- way- allegedly, all- allegedly. Well, I flew all the way to the church. Allegedly, uh, allegedly. Right out of the garden, like after spending maybe six hours in the garden with my jeans, taking fan leaves off three weeks in, didn't wash them, just went straight on. I didn't even think about it either. And like then there was a dog, and I like my wife looked at me, and I was like, well, my, I just got out of the garden, so I'm going to, this is going to be a deal. If it's, if it's a deal, it, you know, this is, it's, it's going to happen now. <laughs> and yeah. nothing, you know, dog didn't even, nothing. Feel like they're really just looking for bombs oh yeah they're looking for any little hard people they aren't looking for weed but i did coming off of the portland airport i did have them shake me down and uh and probe me and then basically admit to racism which was fucking crazy but uh that's a story for another time yep. <laughs> um yeah. Uh, anybody else have anything else? Any other topics they wanted to bring up? I know Roger, you had something I think you wanted to mention. Um, I well, I just mentioned that about the uh, CBD oil. Yeah. Um, no, I met you before. You had something you wanted to bring up the next time we had more of a panelist show, and I don't remember what the topic was because I'm oh, stuck well, now. No, well, no, what I said is next time we know for sure we're having a panelist show, I'd like to take a little format out there with a bunch of topics I'd like the panel to discuss be, with all their... Do you want to bring up one or two? Do what? So do you want to bring up one or two since it's oh, only... I, I, am, I just came out of the sun an hour, like a couple hours ago. I'm not... Um, Answer me, damn it. No, I'm just kidding. I don't what have... About what's let going let on me check that, my notes. What's going on with that lady in front of you, Mr. <laughs> Oh, what, what, what? Well, I said, what about what's going on with the uh, lady that you're holding right there? Is that a lady or is that a guy? Oh, it's a guy. Ah, ah. Uh, yeah, it's a boy. Uh, Why don't you show people? A lot of people don't even see males. A boy. Yeah, he was, I, he was dropping too. Like he was, I was, I think I thought I, I got, I had him showing a little bit <laughs> earlier when it was, he's like literally making it look at the fingers on that sucker man it looks like looks like an alien yeah oh it's a nice plant yeah wow check it out (laughs) yikes oh my god it's a tree yeah i tried uh, to get a 20 ounce cup but the old lady brought me the little one so i rarely put males in in anything they rarely get any bigger than in the 20 ounce cup they don't really need it of course but um it's a beauty the structure of um, Steve was asking about this plant. This male does have obviously nice uh, flower structure that you can tell it's going to make an, uh, that, that the female equivalent of that is going to be nice. You can just kind of see the way it all packs on there. I don't know if you can tell or not. And there's a ton of little, ton of little dudes all in there. And, and then, yeah, you know, it's just got a good stru- general structure. It's a good plant. What strain is he? Uh, Indigo go go. Uh, this says. is a this is a white wizard. It's one of my old uh, yeah. one of my strains that I started right in the early two thousand around nineteen ninety nine from White Widow. My friend gave me. Uh, he brought back some seeds from Amsterdam, but he didn't give me the whole bunch of seeds. And he only gave me the two clones of two different females. And so I had no male to start with. So I had to outcross to something that I had, you know, so I outcrossed to something of mine. And that's why it's not really White Widow. It's it's about one eighth something else, but it's seven eighths White Widow, White Wizard. Yeah, this is a nice plant from a male from generation <coughs> number eight. Sorry. Just, he's just, he's, he's cool. <laughs> he's, 
he's been a law he's been progeny tested a lot you know he's he's like that's what another thing we're talking about like when what how to choose a male that's one thing that inbred you know uh an actual inbred strain whoa oh, shit sorry you guys still there that is it's use <laughs> like family it's useful right, for right. something yeah i think it's sorry about that that that's what that's what a strain is useful for is be the male is being able to uh, choose a male from it and knowing what it's gonna how it's gonna affect things you know what i mean not that yeah, that not that un un you know that a double and triple hybrid males are not good also they could be fantastic as well i'm not you know and i'm not saying that a male from a strain is superior in any way i'm just saying that uh in a cross, especially with something, uh, an unknown clone that you have, some clone that you really like, it might be uh, good. It might help uh, in subsequent generations because you kind of are going to know what you're going to get. You know what I mean? You'll, you'll know what the influences are going to be from that, that strain uh, in going on down the, the road. So it can just make some kinds of breeding projects that start with a cross easier which is really where the choice of male really counts you know we're talking about and uh, that's that's really where it it really matters a lot is in the start of something new you know you have you have this wonderful plant this select female that you know it's probably started with a feminized seed or something like that so you've got to find something to cross it with and what you do what you choose you know the exact choice is really important sometimes yeah, you know, it's just... so nice to have the male is because if you had all these nice you know female or feminized seeds then you've got the one male you can do it's a benchmark and you can breed each one of those feminized seeds and find out what comes out special you know that's exactly. what you're getting at right that's what exactly and a, a male that comes from a strain yeah, is like uh, prepotent in a sense that you you kind of know what you're going to get from it. You know what I mean? So it's very predictable in what it's going to throw, and also in subsequent generations after the cross, things that happen down the line are predictable as well. Not exactly predictable, but uh, those traits are going to be recognizable and easy to sort. You know what I mean? So in generation two and generation three. You're going to know what came from your unknown clone, which was previously unknown. You've only got this clone or, you know, maybe this wonderful plant that you grew from a feminized seed. And you have no idea what went into that plant. You don't know how it was bred, but you're going to see as you go, as you as you breed with it, as you make it F2s and things like that, you're going to see what and it, went into it. <laughs> And Nicodogo, and Nicodogo says, how can he get some green, Mr. Green Jeans genetics? <laughs> I, well, there, you can get a cherry bomb uh, uh, from uh, Swami. Uh, he's got pure cherry bomb. Um, I just about got wiped out this, and I'm going to be making more, you know, and I'm going to really have to, I'm really going to have to get commercial. I mean, I've only just been allegedly you know <laughs> doing this by business by word of mouth but i'm gonna have to be commercial um go go on my website and email me um, i'll hook you up somehow <laughs> let me know what you want you know and what is your website uh what's that oh greenjeansgarden.com yeah you can also find me on on reddit and 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 uh, me and steve are also so i have the r slash green jeans uh reddit slash green jeans uh subreddit and we also have uh hydroponic chronic me and steve have together aquaponic chronic i'm sorry i aquaponic chronic <laughs> aquaponic chronic thanks steve yeah yep. that's where you can find me the real yep. mr green jeans. <laughs> one of the way too many social media things i have to juggle yes i know reddit is cool though reddit is fun and it's a big, huge community, but you can really learn. The the uh, sub for rosin is fantastic. 
for the extract the extract one for for extracts is really cool too because right. you can get some really off the wall questions answered that you normally would not be able to get a good answer to it's it's really good especially if you have a really bizarre science question particularly in regards to cannabis extraction it can be a really good resource yep reddit is very uh very generous people are very generous in sharing and you can watch you can watch the uh the really swift you know a, a progression of rosin technology just about you can just about see it happening you know with everybody sharing it really really freely there and that's that's great that it feels to me like the the internet working the proper way <laughs> like it does here on this podcast yeah. oh yeah <laughs> all right well on that note does anyone have anything else um they want to talk about or should we wrap things up and just call it a night a little early today we yeah can, yeah i've got it oh we're good yeah we're good all right well i really appreciate everyone for joining us we're gonna have a little bit shorter episode this week and then uh, next week we'll be back again with chris trump uh, with korean natural farming uh, big thanks again to uh, chef norman for joining us um, and um, again the uh, the first cbd aquaponic uh, farm experience uh, farm to table dinner will be on june 23rd uh, so if you're looking to check that out uh, in um Half Moon Bay, California. Be sure to check out OroborosFarms.com. We'll have the info up, I think, in the morning. It goes live at like 9 or 10 a.m. or something. I forget. Um, something like that. Anyways, be sure to check that out. And um, yeah, if you're looking to check out my channel, uh, Potent Ponics uh, at Gmail, Potent Ponics on YouTube. Uh, if you're listening to this in the audio format, um, we are live on YouTube every week at potent products on youtube at 6 30 p.m uh, pacific standard time every thursday evening and if you uh, have a guest you'd like us to get on the show uh, just let me know you can email me at potent products at gmail.com also shout out to marty his uh patreon is ap meds uh, his youtube channel is also ap meds he normally joins us but he had a family uh, thing come up so i just want to plug him again so thanks a lot and um now why don't you guys tell people how to find you there uh, roger I'm at I love growing marijuana.com and I've reopened my uh, my uh, self substantial site, hygronomics.com. Right now, I've just got a blog there with an introduction. I'll be adding some content, maybe a forum in a gallery so you can so I can share pictures with everybody there. So that's going to be my little project. Uh, plus, we're still working on the network with all of us, but we're also busy growing and teaching that, you know, we can't get our own projects together all together we're all working in different places so um, i'm working on that but i after spring planning i think we'll be looking at uh we'll have the telephony uh appointment kind of network going on where you might you could probably get a hold of several some or several of the panelists at times by appointment you know and uh, we're going to try to share knowledge that way too cool. uh, what about you mr green jeans how do people find you I'm on uh, greenjeansgarden.com. I'm also there on, I, I have my account there on I Love Growing Marijuana. I've got to, I got to get over there and get that current. And, and, uh, and um, I'm an IC bag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> get, get back on that, get current there too. Cool. I'm so, a yeah. member there, but I never had time to go to ICE. It's, it's like it's a nice place, though. I like ICE. It's Maggie. wonderful. It's yeah. wonderful. I should spend more time there. Forums. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, thanks, Gypsy, Ab. Uh, thanks to you. We had Gypsy Nirvana on last week. He, he was, was great. fun, wasn't he? He was Hell fun. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Gotta have on again. That was a blast. He was great. Thanks to all the listeners. I, you know, Hell I, yeah. That was one of our most listened to episodes, especially for the short period of time when I'm meeting up to over almost 500 listeners in a week. So wow. shout out, shout out to them. And then uh, we've had, a, again, a, over, uh, as of this right now, uh, over 1,100 listeners in the last 24 hours uh, as of getting all the iTunes kinks worked out. So thanks a lot to everyone for uh, listening over there as well. What about you, Josh? How do people find you? Um. Uh, on Instagram, uh, Dutch Blooms Organic Cannabis is the main main deal I do. Um, I also just started a couple Facebook groups that I like virtually have just a few people in them. Uh, one is uh, the Science of Organic Regenerative Cannabis, uh, something or another, um, and just a way to talk about that. 
And then the other one is kind of more like even more narrow. It's um, uh, about using the microscope for the soil food web. And uh, so it's like specific tips about folks who have microscopes and want to, want help uh, talking about identifying microorganisms, you know, so we can yeah. like teach each other, you know, type deal. So, yeah, um, that's on Facebook, which is kind of new to me to do that. And, um, my, you know, my name is Joshua Rutherford. So that's that's I'm hosting there under my own my own true real name. <clears throat> yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot for posting all your stuff and thanks a lot for taking the head and, and you, you know, take the time to put on a bunch of cool conferences. Those are by far the most knowledgeable and informative conferences I've ever been at and appreciate it. And I feel honored to be able to speak at those and uh, I look forward to speaking at future ones and uh, all the cool stuff that you're, you're putting on in the future. So thank you. Well, thanks, man. It's uh, super fun. Just uh, like I said before, scratching my own itch. It's uh I'm learning and it's, it's cool to just, just learn and kind of orchestrate the learning a little bit, you know, my own learning party. Cool. Awesome. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we'll see you guys again next Thursday at uh, 6 30 PM. Again, we'll have Chris Trump He'll be all the way from Hawaii next week. Uh, so uh, it'll be a lot of fun. So thanks a lot. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Take care.